How you doing, fam fam? This is Chris Mizo here. Cyberpunk 2077 Overdrive Mode is here. It is finally something we can test Ada Lovelace on. And is it really a true optimization of NVIDIA's newest Ada Lovelace cards? It just so happened that NVIDIA's RTX 4070 just recently got released, but we won't be testing it on that. The specifications that I will be testing this game on a RTX 4090 with AMD's Ryzen 9 7950X 3 d with a gigabyte 10,000 megabytes of mvme 2.0 pci express 5.0 and a ddr5 that's up to 6,000 megahertz and i will have more details on the specifications down in the description box down below and i will also have the timestamps straight down below if you don't want to hear me talk and you just want to get straight to the point and see what cyberpunk 2077 overdrive mode actually features but if you do want to hear real quick what it does feature is that it will take advantage of nvidia's dlss3 unlimited shadows and unlimited visualizations when it comes to lighting when it comes to luminance it is just a really gorgeous display of graphics now i in the very first part i will show the visual difference between ultra setting and overdrive mode then the second part will be practically a performance test on how well it runs on the walking side and the driving side on different modes and settings and then the final part of the video will show the different benchmarks how much fps you can expect with a system such as this. Now this is a high powered system and it might even run better on a 7800X3D, which I don't currently have. So I will be testing it on a 7950X3D instead. So let's get straight to it. I'm gonna do some commentary over here. Hopefully you don't mind it too much. If you do, just feel free to mute this video and you can watch in peace without my commentary. The first clips that I wanted to show is the natural lighting you get from the sun. You can see it is much more natural in overdrive mode compared to ultra mode. There is some subtle differences as you won't notice too much harshness in the differences between the two. But where you will notice the difference is when you are talking to Wilson. Wilson in ultra mode, you can see how he looks in the lighting and how he has more of a different build but once we go into overdrive he looks much more filled and much more natural ultra mode he looks a little bit more polished and looks more like a doll and has a glossy look compared to overdrive mode now when you're doing your missions you can see the hair it looks a lot more natural in a overdrive mode compared to ultra mode instead of that weird kind of strainy hair that you get where it it's kind of pixelated compared to overdrive mode it looks more like an actual person the face is more fuller the shadows are more natural and doesn't make the person look a little bit different or a little bit weird character wise now it is interesting if you take a look at the shadows and the lighting as they reflect off both characters now what you'll notice too here is that in overdrive mode it looks a lot more natural from the sun but once we go into ultra mode you'll see how much darker the image looks and the sun doesn't really hit as naturally as overdrive mode if you look at the reflection the way the sun hits the buildings and the bridges you can see how much better it looks compared to ultra mode where it looks a lot more shiny and polished Overdrive mode has much more of a natural look compared to ultra mode where it looks a lot more sharper and texturized where it doesn't look like that in real life. Take a look at this for example at this road if you pay attention closely at the lighting and the shadows in overdrive mode it looks a lot more like how it would actually look. Take a look at how the sun reflects off the building, how the windows look, how the reflection looks, how the ground looks compared to ultra mode where everything looks shiny, polished, and almost artificial compared to overdrive mode. Now in overdrive mode, the biggest difference is you're gonna have unlimited reflections, unlimited shadows. So as you see these people are walking, you can see somewhat of their shadows, a little bit of the reflection, but it won't look as natural as overdrive mode to where people are moving much more in a cinematic way and much more. I want you to pay 
close attention to the lighting on the wall and how the reflections look on the ground, especially the shadows of the building in altered mode. Now you look in overdrive mode, the light reflects much more naturally. The shadows of the people when they walk follow them a lot more natural and it actually looks like an actual shadow that is walking with their NPC. Now you go into overdrive mode here as you look through this overpass compared to ultra mode to where it almost looks like there's not that much shadowing. Now here I will be doing some performance testing. You can take a look at the graphics card, the processor, the DDR5 and the NVMe 2.0, the PCI Express 5.0. Uh, drive that I have on this PC. You can see the temperatures are going to be a little bit higher, obviously because it is in overdrive mode. The usage of the memory of the graphics card is close to 13 and a half gigabytes, but it varies 13 gigabytes to 13 and a half. And now I will be doing other modes such as DL DLSS on and DLAA on. So you will see the difference between having deep learning super sampling with deep learning anti-aliasing to see how well it performs. You can see how much of a big drastic difference you get if they're both on because it will take a big performance hit. And now it's like I just bought Cyberpunk 2077 back in 2020. It's practically like having Cyberpunk 2077 all over again without it being properly optimized for a PC. And you can see the FPS takes a big hit. I'm getting an average between 45 to 55 FPS. And now with DLSS off and DLAA off, you can see how much of more of an improvement that I am getting in game. Now, with the LSS off, typically this is just going to rely more onto the graphics card because it's going to require a little bit more power because once you have the LSS on, it does help render the game a lot more smoothly for better performance and it also helps the resolution in game. Now, if you can notice any differences between any of the samples that I show you performance wise, Please feel free to go back and forth and you can completely ignore my voice, but I'll let you watch in peace to see how it looks in different modes in Cyberpunk 2077. I will talk a little bit further into the video when we get to the driving aspect. The lighting is just beautiful. The shading, everything about it is really beautiful in overdrive mode, except the driving. I know I am terrible at driving in Cyberpunk 2077. If you have any tips, please feel free to put it down in the comments down below because it is pretty hard to drive with a keyboard. Here we're gonna have both deep learning systems shut off. So we're gonna have super sampling and deep learning anti-aliasing off. You can see it doesn't really take too much of a performance hit having them both off and the, it's a little bit more jagged on the edges and the quality is not going to be as high. You have both deep learning modes on. You can see how much of a performance hit it takes, especially in the graphics. It takes nearly 16 and a half gigabytes for it to run properly and the temperatures are much more higher. You can see the FPS has a large drop compared to other modes. When we get into ultra mode, you can see everything looks a lot more glossy and the lighting is a lot more artificial. The shadowing isn't as accurate, but
but the ray tracing is still really beautiful regardless. But either way, if you do play in ultra mode, you can see how much more FPS you can get playing Cyberpunk. Now time to actually get into the benchmarks and you can see the actual performance you can get from each mode with this current system that I have. And if you're curious about any of the specifications, make sure you check down in the description box down below as I do have it listed. So when it comes down to it, it all comes to personal preference. Which one do you personally prefer? I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is interested in trying to go into overdrive mode with 
Cyberpunk 2077, please feel free to share this video with them. And also, if you're not part of the Big Wonderful Fan Band, make sure you're down and hit the subscribe button for more. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fam Bam, guys, do you think Overdrive mode is worth it on Cyberpunk 2077? Or do you feel like this is just more hype than anything? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any suggestions or anything I can improve in video, please feel free to share with me because I'm not perfect. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.